All right, hello YouTube. This is CompuWiz47 from YouTube, aka Zorcher from Doom Connector, and now we're gonna finish our Windows 3.1 installation by installing Sound Drivers. Now I went ahead and put the motherboard CD in the drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my CD-ROM, and the default for that is D, D colon. So, so first you want your letter of your drive, and then colon, whoops, colon, and that tells DOS that I want to switch drives. So I should be in the CD-ROM, and actually no, that is my Windows 98 drive, so I'll try the next one, E, and that one's storage, so let's try F, and that one is, okay, that one is my CD-ROM. So I type DIR, and you can see all the files. Now the drivers I know for my sound card are in VIA, and let's see and then we want to switch to VI audio for the sound drivers DIR and as you can see here are all the operating systems um, I, oh there it is VIA DOS so CD for change directory and then VIA DOS hit enter directory again and we're gonna go ahead and install hitting enter and now you should see the installation up here now um, the settings that are here should be correct since I'm using the sound drivers on my motherboard I would need to go into the BIOS which is the motherboard setup program and see what IRQ which is interrupt request and DMA my sound card is being set to. Now I believe 5 is indeed the correct option. DMA is 1 and then the IO base is 220. Now you want to memorize this or keep it down in a handy location because DOS applications are going to require you to enter in this information so that it can find your sound card and so that you can have your sound with your legacy applications. So the install directory is VI Audio and the boot up drive is indeed C. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with the options shown. It's going to go ahead and copy and it looks like installation was successful and it's going to tell you to reboot the system if you want to play DOS games later. So that completes the installation of sound in DOS. Now we actually need to finish the installation by Actually, I just um, executed the CD a little bit quick there, but it's okay. We'll just go back to the C drive, and we just eliminated that problem. Now, if all goes well, this is the part I actually got stuck at last time. If all goes well, your system should start up without any freezes or restarts. So I'm going to go ahead and close my CD drive and restart and hope for the best. Actually while I'm here I'm gonna go ahead and hit the delete key to enter the motherboard setup and what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have my sound driver my sound card set to the right I interrupt so I'm gonna go ahead and to find that option here right quick. Mm. Okay, so it's not CMOS. No. Oh, okay. So, I got here from integrated peripherals, on-chip device function, on-chip sound function. And as you can see, uh, my sound blaster is enabled and the I.O. base address is 220H, interrupt request is 5, and DMA, which is direct media access, is set to 1. Again, you want to keep this noted because DOS applications need this information. So everything looks good, so we're going to go ahead and exit without saving any changes. And again, this should start without any reboots if 
my sound drivers want to work with the memory application, memory management application. So just going over the interface of MS-DOS 7, again I like it. Um, it is definitely something I'm going to have to get used to. I am definitely used to just having the command interface. I'm not used to having this menu up here. So what you'd normally see if you use DOS 6.22 is just this interface right here. So let's go ahead and I just want to make sure that my sound drivers were indeed loaded and as you can see here's the sound driver and here is the port okay so it looks like everything is working just fine now I'm gonna type CLS to clear the screen and now we're just gonna go ahead and do a quick check to see how much memory I'm using now this is actually ideal as you can see I have 649 K memory free um, now, if you're playing DOS games or some DOS applications require you to have 640k and more, so if so, at what I have right now is definitely recommended. I'm glad to see this number right here, which means everything should work just fine. So let's go into Windows and now. As you can see, if I start up Windows here, you can see I still don't have any sound on here. So let's go ahead and change that. Um, now, if you're installing a, a sound card like Sound Blaster, a real Sound Blaster, the driver should automatically detect that you're running Windows and install the appropriate drivers to get sound working in Windows but for my onboard sound card I have to set it up manually so it should be under actually I think it is under main it, yeah main and then control panel and then if I click on sound you'll notice everything's faded because I don't have any sound so I'm gonna go to drivers now I'm gonna hit add drivers now what I'm gonna use is the sound driver right here creative labs sound blaster 1.5 that is the sound driver that comes included with windows 3.1 now there may be a better one out there if anyone out there on youtube knows if it exists please let me know um, any newer driver makes the sound sound even better so you i tell it to install that driver now it actually needs the Windows 3.1 disk, so I need to hurry up and get it out here. Let's see, here it is. Disk 3, putting it in, and... No, it, that is my... That is my CD-ROM. I want the floppy drive, which is A. So I hit OK. Detects the disk, loading the drivers. Now, see, here's the Sound Blaster setup, and now it's asking for your port and interrupt. Now from setup we saw it's 220 and the interrupt is 5. That information is correct so we hit OK. Now it says the Sound Blaster is installed for use with your Pro card. For your card to work correctly you should contact for a specific driver specific to your card. Now that is actually correct. We should be using a more recent driver but I do not have access to such a driver. So we're going to go ahead and hit restart now and when it comes back we should hear sound and I actually did not hear anything let me see hmm it sounds like it should be there let's see windows no I'm not hearing any sound Well, anyway, I'm coming up to the time limit, so I'm going to go ahead and have to cut this video short. Uh, so this is CompuWiz47 on YouTube, Zorcher from Doom Connector, saying leave me your comments in the meantime, and I will try to come up with a solution, and I'll see you guys next video.